<clears throat> here we go. Like, ah, oh, man, Zoom, right? Like last week I spent so much time on the phone with Zoom. I'm like, you guys, like I've got to go live on Facebook with my guests. Everybody's expecting us. And they're like, oh yeah, just do this, just do that. And it worked for them for yes for that. And then it didn't work again today. But thank goodness we can do the recording. And I'm so glad you've made it here. And we're all cozy in our own offices without having to go outside today. Yes. So I am grateful for Zoom for that. So before I get into our talk, which I know we could have talked forever. I'm like, oh, wait, we should be recording this. Um, I do want to give a, a digital marketing tip of the week. And gosh, this time of the year, is so busy and the energy everywhere you go, I don't know, maybe it's just my life or the people that I hang out with. You just, I haven't found anyone cranky. Like even it's freezing and they're like, oh, look at the beautiful, you know, ice on the trees. It's so pretty. They might be thinking, oh my God, it's so cold or whatever. But I think that everyone's putting on their happy, jolly faces. And um, so yesterday I went to a polka dot powerhouse meeting in Warwick, Rhode Island. And I know you belong to polka dot too. So if, if anyone listening hasn't tried a polka dot meeting yet, the energy is just really great. Well, they pack a lot into a couple hours of meetings and you'll meet some amazing people. And I wanted to share with you all. It's funny because people are like, oh, you're so good about keeping in touch. And I wanted to share this with you, especially because I'm talking to Kathleen today and she's about systems. And I wanted to share my system with, with you guys. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. I collect your cards. I'll make little notes on the cards because I might be sending along um, personal notes later and I'm going to add you to um, my constant contact and I might put some notes in my calendar for what I want to reach out to you about. But here's something that I do right away is I'll, whoever I've met in a particular day, let me see if I can make this larger so you guys can see it. I love this. I like that graphic too. I can't find a clearer picture to use it bigger, but, and I put, so here's the thing, right? We've talked about your, what your big idea is. The first thing we talk about in Rise Above Noise programs is what's your big idea? What is, what is everything going to come from? Who's your ideal client? And I'm really glad that I finally came to this. It took me a really long time. Marketing is a service you provide so people can find you, right? So then I kind of say, so this is automatic in constant contact. If I have your first name in there, it's going to say, dear Kathleen, dear Susan. Um, otherwise, I'll say new friend because I just met them and maybe I didn't, they didn't give me their name or whatever. So, um, so thank you so much. And then I give a little bit, very, I probably give too much, you guys. I always say keep it short and then I write like novels. But pretty much just something to let them know, remind them who I am and what my message was. Um, reminding them of my big idea that, that people need them, they've got a service. Um, and then what I want to do, because I get it, I know marketing can feel kind of icky, but if you, again, if you look at it as an act of service, and so what I want to do is offer people, um, I just want to offer people, I just want to give them things that they can use. And so I do have, in this particular case, three things that I shared, this was last month's, um, I'm giving them a free marketing handbook. I'm directing them to the part of my website where I hold all of these interviews like I'm having today because I have met the most incredible people every week. Somebody is giving us a nugget of information that we can take back and use in our life, um, our personal lives or our business life. And also because I am addicted to books, as you know, if you're in the Rise Above Noise Facebook group, every month um, I go through a book and you guys that is for you but it's also for me it's it's a way we'll talk about this with Kathleen it's a way for me to be held accountable for reading one business book a month because I'm like I can't just put it aside because I've committed to putting it on my Facebook group right, right. it's my system so I'm giving 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 here it feels really good people see my face they remember me they remember my white glasses so I just wanted to give you kind of that tip of how it looks like um, and it is that I'm keeping in touch with people right away always 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 I'm gonna scroll right back down here I just want you to know that you can always unsubscribe and that is one thing that you can use when you're feeling funny about your email marketing is people can unsubscribe and you can make it very very clear how they do that it's a permission based um, 
So that is my tip of the week is have something ready to go. Each time I go to a different networking meeting, if I meet new people, I copy this, I change out the top part a little, great meeting you yesterday at Pepper Lane, great meeting you at Shebri, wherever I am, great meeting you at such and such conference. Um, so that they remember where they met me, they see my face and they remember what my big idea is. I love everything about that. I do lesson. too. It feels so good. And if anyone has any questions about that, of course, hit me up on the Rise Above Noise group um, or text, you know, you know me, you can find me anywhere. But here's the good thing today. I am so excited to talk with Kathleen Lawson. I met, well, actually, I saw Kathleen a couple months ago at a Pepper Lane meeting that Becky Bast was holding yep. in Norwood, which if you guys haven't checked it out yet, um, whether you go to Kathleen has a Pepper Lane now, I went to Clara's last week, Becky's. What an amazing group of, it's an amazing organization, m like activating the mom force to build whatever it is that suits them to move forward. In yes, ah, so absolutely. Cool. I've met some amazing women and the conversations every time are just inspiring and I learn so much and they're just, it's a wonderful, I love their mission and I love all the people I've met and I love the time I spend there. Well, I like the boost because I, although I am a networker and I'm a connector, I am so much more comfortable with an agenda. Yeah. <laughs> I like that it's like up to, I don't know, 10, maybe 10 people in a room yep. that you sit, you introduce yourselves quickly. There's a, it's like times and you come with a challenge and then you're instructed to just sit back and receive. Yep. Like where in your life can you just get all of that amazing advice from so many different points of view? So many smart women. Yes, yes. So highly recommend that you try out a Pepper Lane. But yep, then you reminded me that we had met at the Women's Business Network years ago. Yeah. Which I which absolutely right down the street from me. I'm right down the street from where you used to hold your meetings. Yeah. Or, I keep I trying I to get do. there. Tuesday mornings seem to be really tied up with me. But man, it is such a great group of people. Wendy Jurgens is running that now, I think. And um, yeah, she's just doing a great job. So anyway, we could talk all day. But let me give the official bio Business and project manager Kathleen serves visionary small business owners who are overwhelmed with the operational side of their business. Hello. By helping with planning, project management, creating and streamlining systems and other operational activities, your business will run more effectively and, and your you as a business owner get freed up to focus on serving your clients, developing your products and growing your business. Kathleen has experience in the corporate sector, in nonprofit, in direct sales and small business. Like she's the real deal, you guys. She's got an MBA from Babson College and she is a proud mom to five boys. God bless you. Half of which are still sleeping. Hopefully they'll stay sleeping while we're doing this. <laughs> Um, Kathleen's superpower is breaking down a goal or project into executable action steps. Let's get to it, Kathleen. Like this is so perfect for this because people are setting stuff up for the new year, right? Yes. Like what should we be looking at? Well, you know what? It's funny because this time of year, everybody is big into the goal setting and their vision board. And, you know, you go to do that and you're excited and you're, you're feeling empowered and you set these big goals and these big plans and the key then is to be able to take kind of that big goal, that big plan and, and break it down into a plan because what happens is you set this big thing, but you get up tomorrow and you can't just do that big thing. Like you need to know exactly what to do that day. And that's the part that I like to work with people on is how is breaking that down into action steps. So when you get up tomorrow morning, you know exactly the, the executable action step to take tomorrow. So, so, okay, so I have this big idea. I want to serve more people, make a membership group. Like, what are this, not that I'm asking you to coach me here, but like, it's a big idea and I love this idea, but I can't, you're right, I can't start that. And we were talking about like what I'm looking at to put that together, like a big idea. So other people want to write a book right. or they want to make a website. These are big ideas. They are. And that's, and those are the people that I end up helping. I love working with People that are very mission focused, very, I know you use the term heart centered and 
they really believe in what they're doing and they do have the vision. They know exactly where they're trying to go, but they have, they have challenge getting from here to there. And that's where the things that I do come into play and I can help them take that and really kind of work backwards and, and break it down. And that's, that, as you've said, that's my superpower. That's the kind of thing you start talking about. Oh, I want to build a membership group. I start thinking, hmm, you know, how, what's, how, where are we going to put that? How are we going to, you know, do this piece and that piece? And we need, you know, someone to do this thing and, you know, breaking it down into each, down to each little step. So it, it, it just takes planning and breaking it down. And then you've got to manage that process and all those little tasks and, and someone to do them and each little piece of it. Yeah. So where do you, so I have to, a couple, so many questions. So the first question is, where do you think people get hung up first? Okay. I think, I think a couple of things. One is time. So um, I end up working with a lot of solopreneurs and small business owners. And I think a lot of us feel like because we are the business owner, we have to do it all. And I think we put a lot of pressure on ourselves to do everything. And so we run out of time. So that's, one piece, just, just general time. But two, a lot of people don't want to work on this side of things. If you are a, I don't know, a, a leadership coach, you want to be working with your clients on leadership stuff. If you're a graphic designer, you want to be designing stuff. So they don't, they don't really want to work on all that sort of back end stuff. And then the third thing is just skill. A lot of people just don't, it's not their, their, the way they think. That's not the, the, where their skill set is. They don't, they're not a planner. They can't handle the details. They're a big, they're a big vision person. And, and the details just overwhelm them and make them crazy. And so they just don't think that way. So it's, I think it's time. I think it's where they want to put their time. And I think it's, a, it's skill and kind of mindset. So if people are feeling stressed about their skill set, let's say, in putting together an email or figuring out how to do their invoicing, or um, put together their stuff. Do you get pushback or, or do you lead them to outsourcing? Because I know that a lot of solopreneurs are also really very, have to be very mindful of their budget as well. Right, well, you know what? It, well, there's, there's, there's the mindset that you, you, put your, you spend your time doing what you do best and what you're skilled at and outsource the rest because if you, and, and when you think about like the way you maybe um, price your service, you could be spending that time earning more yes. with your service, what you're good at, your superpower, and just pay somebody else to do that piece. I think it really depends. On, I think it's an individual choice if you want to, um, if you want to learn those things and then you, you get the help to, to learn them. Um, and some people do, and some people are great at it. There's, I mean, there's, I know tons of entrepreneurs who really kind of handle the whole side, you know, the whole part of their business, the whole back end, as well as whatever service they're providing. And they're great at it. And they're, they're, it's very impressive that they can kind of do all of it, but some people just like, that's not their thing. And so I, I think there's nothing wrong with hiring, hiring out. So you can kind of do it either way. It's, oh, I think it depends I on each person. I agree. I mean, for me, even once I gave up a couple of things for people to do for me, it just, even though I loved some of it. So one of the things is um, creating some images for posts for different things. And I love that, but here's what I realized. I could easily spend 30 minutes or more choosing an image. <laughs> you yeah. get me on pexels.com. You scroll and forever. Like, ooh, this is pretty, ooh, this is pretty. Let me just pop that into Canva. Oh, that doesn't quite work. I'll just go over here. I could spend really a good amount of time. Um, and so that's why I like having a template right when I work with my clients and they're going to do it on their own, have a template. But man, to have somebody do that for you so that you can do what you love, which I love is um, talking with my clients and giving them the strategies and the resources. Right. So it's worth it to you to spend an hour working with a client and then you can pay somebody to do the piece you don't want to do. Right. And it also connects me with people who have those resources. So then I can say, Oh, you should talk to, let's say Regina, who's helping me with some funnel stuff. Right. So talk to Regina and see, and she can help you with that. So it's a great place to give, to um, experience people's skills so that you can pass it on. Cause I'm, as you know, I'm a connector. Yeah. What is some, so you had mentioned, 
that's where people are having trouble with. So then I have two more questions. So then the question was time management, which I know we've talked about. You and I talked a little bit about somebody you're working with, how um, she was so dedicated to her success that it was something, what she had blocked out her time to such a degree that you were checking up on her. She's in a, this one is in um, uh, direct sales, right? And oh, she's, right, right. Just, she's just killing it. Yes, she is. She is um, very good time management. Well, we, we actually break down her time and, and focus on what she's going to do, time blocking, which is a, a system we were, we were talking about yes. that a little bit. Um, but yes, yeah, absolutely. In the book, the one thing that I'm doing in Rise Above Noise too, that's, what they're, that's so big on time blocking. Yes. And, and that's what I've been trying to do this um, past couple of weeks. And it's yeah, I actually fantastic. posted about time blocking yesterday on, on Facebook. Yeah. Um, that is... So that's a system that you would, um, a time management system. Um, I don't know if we want to kind of talk a little bit about yeah, systems. Absolutely. That's, um, you know, when, when we, so we talked a little bit about planning. So planning project management systems are kind of like the whole back end thing that I think when, that, that the whole idea can kind of overwhelm some, some small business owners, yeah. you know, they, like, again, they they want to focus on the front end of their business and that those are the kind of things that are on the back end that are difficult and systems is a big one. And it's one of the things that I, um, that I am a big, a big proponent of having systems in your business. And some people don't always understand what I mean by that. I'm not talking about a computer system, although technology can often um, be, be a solution to some of these issues, but a system is basically just a, a series of steps that lay out how you're going to do something. And, um, and it can be, it can be anything like an example would be like, for instance, you have a lot of service um, based clients here. Um, so talk about onboarding a client. Mm. So when you have a new client, what is, what are the steps that you take to start working with them? It might be that you, you build, you set, set them up in your billing system and that you send them an invoice. It might be, you have a questionnaire where you want to know some things about their business. Maybe you need some passwords from them. Maybe you set up their birthday and send out cards. Maybe you set up a strategy session. Maybe you set up files I and mean, there's all these different things that you might do to bring on um, to bring on a new client. So that is a system, and so so having systems in different parts of your business, they can save you time. They can they'll make it more make the back end of your business run more efficiently, and it actually provides a better client experience. So. Um, just to kind of dig into that a little bit when you, so this example I gave about the client onboarding. So if you sit down and kind of think about that and think about what exactly you need and, and write that out. Now you've got this system. Well, now it's predictable. You know, these are the nine steps I'm going to take every time I bring on a new client. Well, once it's predictable, then you know how much time it's going to take. So every time I bring on a new client, I do these nine things. It takes me one hour. Mm -hmm. So now, oh, I have three clients to onboard this week. I know it's going to take me three hours. I can actually block out that time. Um, so then once it's predictable, then it's, you can start to get more efficient at it because now you have it, you have it written out, you know exactly what you need to do. Uh, so one, as you're doing it over and over the same thing, the same way, you start to see where you can tighten it up and I don't need to do this and I can do this little piece better and oh, I know a better way to get this part done. So you just get better at it and more efficient and you're not reinventing the wheel every time. So you're not sitting there thinking, oh, I have a new client, what, what, what should I do? Yes. So, so it's getting more efficient then, and this is like where the magic starts to happen, then you set yourself up to outsource or delegate. And this becomes, a, this is a big issue with a lot of business owners. I hear it over and over. People will say, well, I really want to delegate. I want to outsource, but I don't know what to outsource because, yes. and, and, and if they say that they probably don't really have a lot of systems in their business because once you have say the client onboarding, you've got your, your system, it's, it's written out, you know how long it takes. Well, then if you say, all right, I average six new clients a month, here's the system it takes an hour to go, go through each one. You can hand that off to somebody and say, okay, you are now in charge of onboarding all my clients. There is an average of six a month. Here are the nine steps you need to take. So that's real easy to do at this point. Um, and then now you're all freed up. You can work on 
client service or growing your business or whatever you want to do. Um, and it also, and this is the real, uh, the real big one, I think, is that it looks better from the client perspective. Um, so I think the, I mean, I love the benefits of saving time and, and being more efficient, but I think sometimes as small business owners, we feel like, we feel like that's a luxury almost like we've got to be working on client service and I've got to be marketing. And so taking time out to kind of tweak the back end almost feels like a luxury. But when I start to talk about, well, this is going to improve your client experience. then I think, you know, people's ears perk up a little bit, but so when you think about that system from a client perspective, I mean, either let's say you have a new client and, and they've just said, okay, I want to work with you, Susan. So you can have two different, kind of conversations, you can have one that says, okay, that's great. Well, you know what? You're going to get two emails from me. One is going to be the invoice and the other one is going to be a little welcome packet. And it's going to give you all the information about how we're going to work together. And there's going to be a link in there to a survey for some information that I'm going to need. And there's going to be a link to my scheduler so we can schedule our first session. And, you know, there's all the information that looks so clean and tight and professional. Or you say, oh, okay, great. And uh, yeah, let's, oh, you know what? Let's uh, set up that call. And then the next day you call back and say, oh, you know what? I needed this other thing. And then, oh, I forgot to tell you this other thing. And you know, where you're doing it all piecemeal and it's not as professional. So, so having a system is gonna look better from a client perspective and you look better. I hear you speak like this and I'm like, oh, yes. <laughs> it, it just feels right to look, yeah. to present organized and to know that there's a flow like you said it looks good on the on the client side but it also gives me a sense of hey look at i know what i'm doing here <laughs> right? yeah well and then you're not always winging it i mean that's that's stressful and time consuming to and that's what i think that's what overwhelms business owners is when you just don't know what to do that's yeah. when you're overwhelmed when you know what to do and you know, you've got the system in place and you know what you're doing, then you just gotta like go through bit by bit by bit, cross it off. And you know, it's a lot less overwhelming. <laughs> That's so and there's, good. Yeah, and there's, there's all the different parts of your business. There's places to, to implement systems. So you said time blocking. So that's kind of what I consider the first bit, the whole time management and how you actually work. So uh, you're, and you were talking about appointment schedules, I think on your call last week. Mm -hmm. So that's a real, um, that's a real basic one. And that does use technology, but time blocking or how you plan your week. I mean, there's a system, how you approach your, your planning for your week or for your month or for, for whatever, um, however you look at your planning. Um, and then marketing, that's your area of expertise, but there's probably a lot of systems that you, I assume you would help your clients with. So content management would be like a real basic one. I find it, if you're not, if you don't have a system for that, it can be very stressful to sit every day and think, you know, if you're, if you're posting on social media a lot to think every day, well, what am I going to post? Yes. That puts a lot of pressure on you. It's, it's more difficult to be strategic if you haven't given that some thought, if you don't have some sort of system in place, I think it takes you a lot longer. And I'm not saying that you wouldn't have days that you all of a sudden were inspired by something and you've got to get that message out. And that's awesome. But overall, you want to be able to have a plan and, and, and maybe kind of do some of that in advance. And that takes a lot of the daily pressure off or even like your Absolutely. podcast here, when we first started talking about this, you said, okay, well, I like to have my guests planned, you know, a couple, however many weeks it was in advance. And I'm going to send you a survey where I get this information and my VA is going to promote it here, here, and here. And so you had a system, right to do that. And if you didn't, then, I mean, who knows you could be sitting here and going, Oh, I have a podcast this week. Who am I going to have on it? I mean, that's, <laughs> you know, that's, you've, you've got a system for that. Um, so yeah, so time management, the marketing piece, uh, then you look at your sales. So going from your, your leads to your sales. So what is that process? And do you, how do you track your leads? There's a system there. Um, wherever you're tracking that, is it on sticky notes or do you have a, you know, a system somehow either on Trello or on some CRM? Um, do you, if you have a, in, if you have customized plan uh, programs with your clients, do you have some sort of proposal system? There's another place where you might have a system that you're putting into place. Uh, and then you move into your service delivery. So 
If you are a coach, how do you actually work with your clients? Do they, do they before every call, do they send you something? Do you, uh, do you send something to them after a call? I mean, what is the actual process that you go through when you're delivering that service? Or if you're manufacturing something, well, then you've got all sorts of systems around inventory management or distribution. I mean, there's, there's, a, there's a ton there too. And then, you know, there's the financial side of your business. Oh my God, yes. <laughs> yeah, the system's there. Like, how do you invoice your clients? Let's say, you know, every week you stop and think, okay, who do I need to bill? And what was this thing I, you know, are, are you tracking that someplace so that it's easy to do that? Um, your team, if you have team members, when you think about hiring, onboarding, training, and managing a team, there's all sorts of little systems that can be put into place there. I mean, every time you bring on a new team member, do you just sort of wing it or do you, do you know, okay, I need to cover this, this, and this, this is the way I like to, to train them. Um, you know, even uh, metrics, how, what do you measure in your business? Oh, yes. Yeah. What do you measure? When, where do you keep it? What do you do with it? You know, systems around that. So, you know, whenever you're looking at a different place in your business, and one of the things that I, that I will say is that if you find yourself stumbling in an area, you probably need a system there. You probably need to tighten up a process. If you're constantly getting to this point and going, oh, you know, this is a mess. I don't like this little thing over here. It's, it probably needs a system. Mm. Um, and so you think about, is there a step-by-step -step process that's really duplicatable or duplicable? Um, there, is it documented? Um, where do you keep those? Um, have you reviewed it recently? <laughs> oh yeah, I had this system I put in place two years ago. We don't really use it. I mean, that doesn't do you any good. Right. So, um, so those are kind of the ways that I like to look at the, at the systems. Wow. So but, good. You must be like a fairy godmother to everybody. They're like, I had no idea it could feel this good. I know when I started, we, we were talking earlier about, um, I started with Dubsado, yeah. which helps me. I didn't even know you know, you don't know what you don't know. Right. And so the fact is I'm barely scratching the surface. They are so good about customer service. So I have another, um, they'll just let you get on calls with them and they'll just take you through things. So they recently helped me figure out how to, um, like I have canned emails, right? Like you said, when somebody is like, yeah, let's do this. I'm like, okay, great. Here's your proposal. You sign that, and then right away it takes you to the contract to sign, and then right away it brings you to the invoice, right? Step by step by step, and then and you can you can of course personalize it. After that, something goes out to the client and says, "Here's what I need from you." So exactly what you're saying, and I never really like I had templates in my Gmail ready to go out, but um, this just makes it so much easier because right. it was an exercise for me to put my thoughts in order that way. Right. And to realize, oh, I only really have these four or five things that I offer. I thought I was offering the world, but really it's these few things that I do, right? Well, and it makes you think through, think through the process. Like what, what do I really need from my client to get us started in the, the best way? What's the information I need? What do I need to tell them? So that they so that we can make the most of working together right as i say hit the ground running like get all your passwords in order make sure you're signed into whatever we're going to talk about make sure you have a zoom account make sure it works right so that we're taking every minute and using it right and that they know how to reach you and that they know and if you have certain boundaries i mean i've talked to other people who you know, who might have issues with clients. Um, well, I actually did have somebody who had issues with clients calling them at all hours oh, and expect, you know, calling them at 930 at night and expecting an answer. And so I was like, well, you know what, how about a letter that says, these are the times <laughs> I'm available. Here's my, my policy on getting back to you. You know, I'll get back to you in this amount of time and, um, you know, that kind of thing, which can be part of that as well. But it makes you think through that and, and this way, it's a good relationship for everybody. This is so good. I feel like we could talk about this for hours, but I want to be respectful of your time and people listening. How can people find out more about you? What, what, how do they work with you? What, what's a good place for people to start? I would say probably my Facebook um, business page, which is Kathleen Lawson. Um, and I do on there share um, tips and things like that. Actually, I'm in the middle of my 12 days of- Yeah, I'm enjoying those. 
Thank you. They're not as quick as I anticipated, as I originally planned them to be. They're, they're a little bit longer, but they're good ones. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I do share information on there. So I work with people in a couple of different ways. <clears throat> um, I will work with someone on their business, um, and then I work, will work with people in their business. So on their business, um, my basic um, my basic service is a strategy session, um, which I am offering a special for, for your viewers. And that is that is time spent to dig into um, kind of what whatever they might need for it could be a big goal or a vision that they want to create a plan for so I'll help them break it down and put together a, an executable action plan and we can create and if we need to create some systems around different parts of that so that they can take that and actually have a plan that they can go implement um, I also um, will work with people in their business if they want, if, if they just want to have somebody else do it. Here, you do it all. Um, so I do have a few clients that I do that with as well. Um, but you can find me right there on Facebook and all my uh, contact information is there. Awesome. Um, is, it, I'm gonna, is it okay to mention what you have have here for the strategy the two-hour strategy session oh, yeah absolutely yeah. so you were very very generous and i'm like hmm, maybe i should do this pick up new tips um it's a two-hour strategy session you guys it's usually um 249 dollars and kathleen is offering it if you say rise above noise or me or i saw you on susan with susan um 179 dollars and man that could be two hours to change your life and change your business this is a good time. Of, well, any time of year is a good time, but especially now, as we were talking about in the very beginning, a lot of people are are um, setting these big goals for the year, like, oh, I want to do this. And if you have a challenge taking this down to a plan that you can implement, then that's something that we can really do is take that that big vision and bring it down into a plan. And, and we'll put it right on to a um, onto a, a framework that will they'll be able to check you know check off or speak in my language framework <laughs> processes systems so good i'm so glad that we met up again i'm so glad that we've connected and i can't wait to go to one of your pepper lane boosts coming up yes i hope you will come up we yeah. um, i'm very excited about the pepper lane and, and all of that it's a lot of fun yeah changing the world one woman at a time that's right yeah Thank you, Kathleen. Thanks, Susan. I'm going to hang up and then I'm going to hang on with you for one second. Stop recording. All right, bye, guys. Actually, I don't think I see every. I don't think we're doing another one of these until after the new year. So I want to wish everybody happy holidays, happy new year, happy quiet time between now and January. Peace.